Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Think of a time when you were talking to someone and they said something like, you have just got to see this movie or you have just got to go to this new restaurant in town. There's this new thing and someone thought it was so good and worth experiencing that they wanted you to also experience it. Maybe you were not so sure, like maybe it wasn't your favorite movie genre or not your type of food, but this person was so persistent that you decided to give it a try. And so you go out, you try it out, and it is amazing. Like you cannot believe how good that food was, or now you are so hooked on that new movie or TV show that you just can't wait for the next episode in the series to come out. When someone points you in a direction to try a new experience, more often than not, it ends up being something incredible that makes life more enjoyable. Our gospel reading today is all about being pointed in the right direction, to be guided to an experience like nothing you have ever seen before. We start off with some Greek tourists wanting to meet Jesus, and Philip and Andrew act like ancient secretaries to see if Jesus has room in his schedule. As usual, Jesus completely dodges the original question and launches into a lesson that addresses how everyone has missed the point. Jesus is focused on his death and how his death is necessary so that a new and abundant life can grow. Everyone is confused and when the voice came from heaven, people became even more confused. But Jesus knows that his hour has come. It is time for the greatest event that the world has ever experienced. Just as a grain of wheat dies so that it bears much fruit, so too Jesus will die and an even greater abundance of life will emerge from his death. The Greeks that wanted to meet Jesus may have heard about Jesus' miracles and wanted to see it for themselves. But for Jesus, the healings, the miracles, everything in his life is as impactful as one grain of wheat. But when he dies and raises from the dead, then a bountiful harvest of grain can be reaped. Everything is leading up to this one moment, his death. And if you thought his miracles were impressive, what Jesus is about to go through will shake the entire cosmos. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus will be victorious over the ruler of this world. Evil will not win. On Wednesday night, we dwelled on Luther's words on baptism and that the benefits of baptism are the forgiveness of sin and everlasting relationship with God. These are God's promises to us, fulfilled by Jesus through his death and resurrection. The promises go unfulfilled if Jesus does not die. I think there is a temptation 
to wish that Jesus was here to perform miracle after miracle for us. It would be pretty easy to believe in him if we saw his miracles with our own eyes. Life would be pretty easy if Jesus could heal all the sickness away. In his ministry, Jesus shared what it was like to be in relationship with God through his actions. And the miracles were only a small taste of the feast to come. Achieving pleasure and comfort in this world is nothing compared to embracing the love of God in this life and forevermore. This is a trap we still need to avoid today. Because sometimes we try to use Jesus for our own agenda instead of joining Jesus in his. We want Jesus to be on our side of the argument. How Jesus favors my side or my country or my viewpoint. When Jesus' agenda is love for the entire world. The hour has come to go beyond the world as it is. And through the events of the cross and the empty tomb, a new way of life begins. A way of life that still has to engage in the world, but instead, our agenda is to bring about the kingdom of God to feed the poor, heal the sick, clothe the naked, to proclaim the gospel, to love our neighbor. When the Greeks wanted to meet Jesus, his response was to point them and everyone around to the cross. This passage is a callback to Ash Wednesday where we began this Lenten journey, pondering what we need to lay at the foot of the cross. We have our viewpoints, our agendas, our desires, but Jesus calls us to focus on him. The event of the cross means that Jesus died for the sake of the forgiveness of sin, and his resurrection means That death did not win, but Jesus did. So too we as followers of Jesus join in a death like his and a resurrection like his through our baptism. Our agenda is Jesus' agenda, which is to go forth and baptize people of all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus cared for the least among his community, the ones neglected and rejected. We are called to love God and love our neighbor. These great commandments are what should guide our way of life. Just as a grain of wheat dies and bears much fruit, we are called to die to ourselves for the sake of bearing fruit. We cannot ignore the state of the world, but the only reason we engage in it is to proclaim the gospel. We ought to create a world where the hungry are fed, the naked are clothed, the sick are healed, because that's what Jesus did. And that's what the kingdom of God looks like. And be it through government policy, community organizations, individual creativity, church ministry, charity, whatever. As followers of Jesus, our only agenda should be to lift up the least among us and proclaim the gospel to all people. Jesus cared about human bodies and spirits. Therefore, we also need to care about people's bodies and spirits, that they are nourished. 
As we approach Good Friday, we are called with the difficult task to release our personal agenda for the sake of Jesus. This is hard work and not something that can be done in a day. It is work that we all have to do, me included. But as long as we hold on to the pleasures and agendas of this world, the fruit we bear will be meager at best. On this day, we are called to examine our agendas and desires and ask, do these things bring about the kingdom of God or are they for personal gratification? Holy Week will, will soon be among us. And whether we like it or not, we will come to the cross. We can put to death the things that cause death in our lives at the foot of the cross. For Jesus on the cross eradicates death. We may not like it that Jesus points to the cross when we want to point to things in this world. But when we release that which is contrary to God's kingdom, we will find life. We will find a new freedom and may even do the impossible work of breaking the cycles of division we find ourselves in. For Jesus is our center, our savior, the one who did change the world. And with him by our side, we will continue to change the world and walk a new path that brings nourishment to all. Thanks be to God. Amen.